Hi everyone. This is a really important video and I am kind of nervous because my last video got a little bit more attention than I thought it would. I'm bringing up an entire topic that is so important in my life and to have to bring that all up again and hope that I say everything that I want to say is just a tad stressful. If you are here, it's because you read the title and I am doing my five year update on my OCAD review. I think it was five years ago that I uploaded that video, which is so crazy to think that I graduated from school five years ago. If you haven't seen my first OCAD review video, Go watch that now. I am going to link it down below. The fact that it's been five years since I graduated university is crazy. I know I definitely don't look like I'm graduating. <laughs> Quick little disclaimer on what the environmental design program is. It's essentially an architecture and interior design kind of hybrid sort of program. Now, if you've seen my first video, you know exactly how I feel about OCAD and I have some very, very strong opinions. I thought it was important and that people would want to know how I feel after the fact. All those feelings were very raw and in the moment and um, being that I was so opinionated, I figured if it was me and I was researching OCAD that I would want to know um, someone who said such strong things how they feel years after the fact and where they are in life career-wise and XYZ, all of the above. So I'm gonna do that for you because that's what I would want. So let's dive into it. So the big question is, do I still feel those same feelings toward OCAD today? The answer to that question is yes, I, I do. OCAD was definitely a huge, huge part of my life and actually impacted my life and who I am as a person so much more than I thought it would. I'm not gonna lie, this topic is still a little bit hard for me even five years later. And I know that might sound absolutely ridiculous to some people, but just everything that happened at OCAD and where that has led me has absolutely impacted my life in ways I never thought it would. So it is weirdly enough hard for me to talk about. Everything I said about my profs was true. How they made me feel while attending that school still does stick with me even a little bit five years later. Um, my experience at OCAD, I still think, wasn't really worth it for me as far as what I came out of it with. I feel like educationally, I did learn something, but I certainly didn't learn $22,000 worth of information. Um, and I don't feel like the amount of money I spent benefited me whatsoever currently where I am today and possibly may not benefit me going on um, for the rest of my life. I also feel um, emotionally coming out of there with friends or just a good experience, everything like that. No, I didn't personally get enough of that for me to find going there being worth it at all. It's hard to express how you feel about a place when a lot of people won't necessarily believe you feel that way or can't wrap their mind around how something could have impacted someone so badly and they just can't wrap their mind around that just because it was just a school. I actually gained a lot of trauma from attending OCAD and I know that sounds crazy but it is 100% true. I am now just as of this year starting to feel comfortable with even considering a career in design I was it, it's so funny people would say the word design or suggest me working in that field or ask me why I'm not working in that field and just that comment would make me so angry and 
upset me so much and for years and years I couldn't grasp or understand why I was so bothered or why why my feelings were so strong and um I've finally kind of come to terms with all of that and dove into it and understood it um I've definitely gone to therapy for that and a few other personal reasons um just to kind of help cope with everything that I dealt with in that environment and the person that it kind of turned me into. OCAD kind of um, affected myself as a person. It changed my personality. Um, it changed the way I look at life. It changed the way I place myself in life, um, which is very, it's very strange. I mean, a lot of you don't really know me. There's a lot of things that I have gone through in my life that were either traumatic or just crazy enough to have a large enough impact. But for some reason, OCAD just stuck and was that one thing to kind of change me and who I am. I have yet to use my degree. Um, as many people... A lot of people don't use their degrees and that's a hundred percent fine there's nothing wrong with that but I'm just letting you know for the sake of this video obviously what I have been doing since attending OCAD at some receptionist experience receptionist experience receptionist why does that sound weird coming out of my mouth right now I've been doing for the past year until recently losing my job due to COVID-19, which super, super sucks because I loved my job. It was an amazing job. Um, I worked at an aesthetic company. I was doing their administrative work. There was a few months during COVID where I really started to take on a lot more responsibility. I was also the social media manager there and I absolutely loved that. I definitely found um, a passion for social media management. I totally rebranded their company. It was amazing. It was going well. Um, and then COVID happened and things just kind of went downhill as it did for a lot of other people. And unfortunately I am unemployed, hence why I'm sitting at home and filming this, um, in the middle of the day. There's definitely a lot of shame that comes with that and I know a lot of people are in the same position and that's not the way that I feel. Um, that's not the way that I should feel about it. Um, after five years, I have finally felt kind of open to working in the design field again because I still do have like that passion for design. I love being creative. It's just who I am. So um, I have been kind of looking in that field a little bit too, um, but a lot of things that OCAD didn't prepare you for, they didn't tell you what a lot of employers would be looking for. There's a lot of different programs that you need to know. Um, personally, I was really good at AutoCAD. That was kind of my thing. I could, I did that pretty efficiently, pretty well. Um, but then, of course, there's also renderings in architectural and interior design programs. Renderings weren't my strong suit. I couldn't quite get the hang of SketchUp, which um, was a pretty important program at the time. I know there's a few new ones that are, people are using now, like Revit um, and a few other programs that I've kind of seen and heard of. Those programs are quite essential. A lot of design companies out there want you to be proficient in both rendering programs and AutoCAD and unfortunately I'm just good at AutoCAD and I've found that in interviews or applying for jobs that possibly that could have been the reason why I wasn't getting those jobs is because I only had the AutoCAD experience. Definitely want to end this video off with just a bit of advice. What I wish I could do or what I wish I could have done was kind of take time to know myself and find myself. Um, coming out of high school, I went to a high school where coming out of high school, you go straight into university. Um, no questions asked. That's what everyone did. But if I could go back, I definitely would have took a year or maybe even two off to really find myself and understand my passion. At the time, I thought and 
I thought I knew that I was extremely extremely passionate about interior design. Now that it's been five years, I've noticed I have so many other passions and so many other things that I wish I went to school for. So I highly suggest taking the time to just find yourself, grow, age up a little bit, experience things in life, um, get small jobs here and there, and that might actually open you up to something, a new passion, and you may want to go to school and further your education in that, opposed to just assuming you like something coming out of high school and only being 17 or 18. Also wanna kind of put the message out there that don't ever be ashamed that you don't use your degree. I know there's tons of people out there who don't use the their degree, their specific degree, what they went to school for. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. People go through life all the time and switch their passions and I think it's totally okay to switch your passion over 500 times whatever whatever it takes for you to be happy your happiness and what gets you up in the morning is the most important thing I never want anyone to feel like they're less than because they feel like they can't figure it out I definitely felt like that for such a long time and I feel like I'm slowly starting to understand who I want to be and what I want to do and it does take a long time and don't rush yourself everything happens in due time and I just wanted to let people know because I know that a lot of people in around my age and my generation are having a hard time figuring out what the hell to do with their lives but you will figure it out you will like something or love something and just dive into it um, so that's what I suggest. If you are still here watching this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope that at least one teeny thing that I said helps you in any way. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I will definitely answer any questions. I've had some people um, in the past five years um, reach out to me um, in my dms on instagram I'll link my instagram below so thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully i see you next time